And we are back. What's up, guys? Max Scoble here for IGN. I'm at E3, and I'm with Dan and Jason from Treyarch, and you guys have brought out Black Ops 3. Black yeah, to the future. We have. <laughs> Again, <laughs> further to the future. What's, so what's going on with, with Black Ops 3? Give us the elevator pitch. Um, <clears throat> it's, a, it's a dark and twisted world, kind of coming from the, the story finishing off uh, Black Ops 2, moving into the future. And we now uh, are introduced to the science of augmented soldiers. Uh, the ability for a soldier to have limbs replaced and, and DNI, this direct neural interface, uh, which allows soldiers to kind of interface with technology on the battlefield and other kind of special skills. That sounds fun. How, how far into the future is this? Uh, it's in uh, 2065. Okay. So uh, a fair amount. And we, uh, you know, we, we finished up like, you know, 2025, Black Ops 2. And then we, we look at our technology. We look at, uh, you know, the predictions we're making. And then we start to extrapolate, looking at the technology today and say, okay, if these things happen, this is the kind of world we would expect in the future. That's awesome. So you've gone, you've gone like full sci-fi here, and this is, this it's, is cool. I like that you're kind of you're committing well, to the world that you've built. It's, you know? it's interesting because it's like, obviously it's fiction, but I, I think what we look at is, we, you know, the distinction in sci-fi for me is we're looking at it and saying, make sure it's grounded, make sure all the kind of decisions and the choices we're making in the world, and the technologies, and the environments, are informed from what we see today. You know, and it's quite spooky because we'd make predictions about technology and say, oh, you know, we should do that 2065. And then the next day it's like the military announces that that thing's just been created. We're like, oh, we have to go even further out. It's you know? gotta be a little bit unsettling. But, uh, <laughs> now let's talk about the actual, the technology of, of, of the game itself. You guys are doing a lot with the current, well, new gen hardware as they're Absolutely. calling it. What's, uh, what are the, the cool new features we got going for Black Ops 3? Well, I mean, for the, for the campaign, I mean, the big, you know, from a design point of view, the big thing is uh, bringing co-op, bringing four-player co-op uh, to the campaign for the, for the first time in a while. Last time we did this was, uh, was World of War, uh, and this, this campaign is fully playable as, as a co-op experience. And so by doing so, we've uh, expanded, expanded the play space. So we have larger play spaces than ever before. You'll see in the video in a second, this larger arena type, arena type space to let the players move around and make choices. <clears throat> and as you, uh, as you do that, we have to say, okay, well, the AI have to be smarter now. The AI needed to make judgments about where any particular player is. Uh, and so we wrote a brand new AI system. And then put on top of that a brand new animation set. Uh, and then as we're doing that, we said, well, we're in there. Let's make different archetypes now. So we, now we have bipedal robots now. Wow. And they have different sensibilities. You know, the, the human sen you know, sensibility is, I'm going to hide behind this thing. Robot sensibility is like, I'm just going to walk Two forward and feet. shoot you okay. as best as I can. They can also now communicate with each other. So they'll, they'll move into formations like phalanx. Oh, wow. Columns okay, and so that's forth. awesome. Uh, now, you've also got, um, did I read this right? You've got character customization? Yeah. Yeah, so you can. For the you, campaign? Yeah, so you can pick to be a male or a female, first off. And that will play the entire campaign through with that voice and that. That, wow. that visual and how how robust is the is the customization? Uh, pretty robust, yeah. We got full kind of character changeouts, and you can also change the, the face of the character, both male and female. Uh, and then there'll be unlocks through the game as well to kind of customize it even further um, to allow you to to really kind of identify. And then the weapons, you know, and uh, the, the weapon system being to have different attachments, different styles of guns, different paint jobs you can place onto the guns. Then the different cyber abilities that you're seeing here kind of used means that you can customize to be what kind of soldier do you want to be? You know, are you the guy who runs in there, lots of close combat. Or are you kind of the guy who kind of hangs back and gives support for a space? Uh, it really allows you to say, this is who I am, and this is how I want to play the game. Cool, and as, as you'd expect with a, a very augmented future, there's a ton of uh, kind of cool traversal and, and melee attacks that you're, you're doing stuff with. You've got a, a, a lot of a very fast movement. It's, yeah. Uh, Kind of reminiscent of old of old PC gaming almost. Yeah, and this is this is really kind of inspired from from the MP side, from uh, you know some of the kind of core principles that they brought to the table. Yeah, the the, uh, the whole movement set. You know, we started from the beginning of the project. It was one of the very first things that we did. We wanted to we wanted to overhaul and take the movement system forward. Uh, you know, we've done things in the past, like on Black Ops One, we had dive to prone. It was a really big kind of uh, fun new maneuver that players could do, and we really wanted to just bring so much more to the players' repertoire and what they could do in the game. And we had to start early on that because the uh, the movement set and how you design your maps go so hand in hand like you cannot really separate the two from one another so we we got that movement system in very early and we designed all of our maps around that the principles of that and giving players a sense of power giving them a sense of really command over the environment their interaction interaction with the environment um, and, and one of our me, uh, core goals was really to make it feel fast fluid and visceral and give players a sense of, of power and command over the environment yeah, and this is interesting. Obviously, uh, Sledgehammer is another studio entirely, yeah. but you guys are working under the Call of Duty umbrella. They mm -hmm. brought out the exosuits that we saw in Advanced Warfare. Yeah. How familiar do you think this is going to feel? I mean, is, it, is somebody going to pick up the controller and immediately kind of just know what they're doing? Is that kind of the So, I mean, that's here? the hope. And we've okay. watched, uh, you know, watched 
tons of players pick it up, and they, they pick it up really fast. So that's really a good sign. Uh, you know, ours is uh, as Black Ops is a franch is a sub franchise of the Call of Duty uh, universe. You, that's what we do at Treyarch, and we were really evolving from our roots with Black Ops 1 and Black Ops 2, and that's how we started with, with Black Ops 3, was building off of the movement systems that we'd had in the past and building off of the pace and the flow of the gameplay. That's awesome. And is it, is it safe to assume that because you've got bigger, more arena-like levels in campaign, we're going to see that in multiplayer too? Uh, you know, we have a, a very kind of principled sort of guidelines about how we build our maps. It's a competitive play space, and uh, with the new movement set, you know, I think there's, there's always that fear that you change something so fundamental about the game that you're going to lose something in the process. And we've actually gone to really great lengths to make sure that our maps are designed with all those core principles in mind. You know, we, we're Treyarch's known for a, a very three-path structured kind of map design, and we stay true to that. And, uh, you know, we, we, we always want to keep the combat in frame because that's really the core fundamental of the game. People want to have those satisfying head-to-head -head engagements, and we really have fought to preserve you wanna, that. You just, sometimes you just want to <laughs> shoot your friends. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, of course, one last question. Zombies? Not allowed to talk about that. No? Okay. Well, that's a bummer, but... <laughs> that sounds... We could, you know, maybe, maybe get our hopes a little bit up there. Um, I, I, I think you should. All I, right. And when, when is this coming out? Where can people get it? Official taglines. Uh, November 6th is coming out on the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. Um, hopefully they can get it everywhere. <laughs> yeah. I'd be, I'd be really surprised if anyone's like, what? November? <laughs> what? A Call of Duty no. game? <laughs> Madness. Crazy. Well, guys, thank you so much for chatting. The game looks great. The future thank you. looks thank you. blacker than ever. <laughs> Robot jumps. Uh, for all your E3 coverage, keep it right here on IGN. Take it easy. Awesome. Thank you.